In this video, we're going to show that if you got a sequence of Riemann integrable functions on an interval a, b, such that that sequence converges uniformly on a, b to some function f, well then, the limit function f should also be Riemann integrable. And moreover, the integral of the limit should be the limit of uh, the integral of each of the functions in the sequence. So this is that idea that uh, with uniform convergence um, and the property of being Riemann integrable, that that property transfers from the sequence to the limit. So that's what we're going to try to prove. So um, let's see how the proof go. So what do we want to do? I want to show later, or the goal of the proof is to show that f's Riemann integrable and that its integral is in fact the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral of each of the functions in the sequence. So let's see what we can say. Let epsilon be bigger than zero. So the first thing that we want to do is, um, what can we say about the fact that fn uniformly converges? So the Cauchy criterion tells me about how do the points, or sorry, how do the functions in the sequence end up uh, relative to each other? So what does that ensure? It ensures that given any epsilon, you can find some index n such that once you get past that index, the functions in your sequence all are going to be within epsilon of each other. So the functions are kind of clustering around something. So remember that idea um, is also going to apply for us that uh, our function converges, our sequence converges uniformly. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out this absolute value inequality, think college algebra. That's the same thing as saying that the inside fm minus fn is between minus epsilon and epsilon. Now, I know that all the, the uh, functions in the sequence fn are Riemann integrable functions. And remember that uh, the integral will respect these inequalities. It might change these to less than or equal to's to be safe, because who knows. Uh, and so now when we integrate, we should get, well, the integral of this from a to b, that's that constant there. So it should just be the constant times the length of the interval. That's the same thing over here on this side. The integral of epsilon should be epsilon times the length of the interval, b minus a. And then finally, though, when I integrate these, remember that is just the difference of the integrals. It's that linearity property of the integral. Okay, so what does this show? If you think about this, well, epsilon was arbitrary, and I showed that, well, eventually, uh, all of these integrals are going to be within epsilon over or epsilon times v minus a of each other. Now, since epsilon was arbitrary, that's enough to say that this sequence of numbers, the integral from a to b of fm, right, that's a number for each one of these, that this is a Cauchy sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. So remember then that that means that's equivalent to saying that this sequence converges. So remember, R has that completeness property. It's complete, unlike the rational numbers. And uh, what does that tell me? That all Cauchy sequences of real numbers are in fact convergent and vice versa. So remember like this kind of idea uh, back in the beginning of this class on real analysis or advanced calculus, this is kind of the big difference between, say, the rational numbers and the real numbers. The rationals don't have this completeness or supreme property, but the real numbers do, so I need that. So what can we say then? I know that the limit of this sequence of numbers exists, so let's call it A. So the limit of the sequence of numbers, this should be an M here, sorry about that, is equal to some A that's a real number for sure. So the goal of the rest of the proof is to try to show that f's a Riemann integrable function and that the integral of f, remember f here is the limit of each fm individually, not the integral, just the function fm, uh, and that uh, the, the integral of f should be this number a, which again, a is the limit of the integrals here. All right, so what do we want to do? And symbols, remember, what does that mean? What are we going for? So in symbols, to do that, we need to show for any epsilon that's positive that there uh, exists a positive number delta, such that if you took any tag partition of the interval from A to B, whose norm or mesh is less than delta, then that should imply that the Riemann sum of the function on that partition is within epsilon of A. So that's what we're going for here. So uh, if you were trying to do this by hand and, and kind of reinvent the wheel and do this proof from scratch, I uh, imagine what they did is, like we usually do, start playing around with this and see what we can say. So that's what we're going to do. But this is important for us um, up here, I guess, no, sorry about that, I got ahead of myself. So let's let epsilon be bigger than zero. So now let's use the fact that my sequence of functions converges uniformly to this function f. So that tells me that I can do some stuff with epsilon here, and I'll be able to give a statement about how close the functions in the sequence eventually should be to f. So what does that tell me? Well, that says that, well, there should exist some natural number k, such that for all indices past that, 
the functions in your sequence should be within epsilon of f, and that needs to hold for every single x in the interval. Remember, that was the big thing about uniform convergence, where this k only depends on the epsilon, and, it, and this statement is going to hold for every single x in the domain of these functions here. Okay, so now let's bring in a tag partition. Just as p is any tag partition, we'd normally denote it by here is what the typical subintervals look like, where the xi's are the partition points, and the ti's are the tags. Those are the things that we're going to plug into the function. If you're like me, you always want to think about, or I guess you'd like to think about the integral as uh, some kind of an area. So think about this is like going to give me the, the length, and this is going to give me the height of like some rectangles. Of course, if the function is not positive, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, though, so I've just got a typical tag partition from this interval for A to B. So what do we got? Well, if M is an index that's so bigger than this K, then it ensures that the sequence of functions is within epsilon of the limit function for all X in the interval. Let's look at what happens when I think about the difference in the Riemann sum of the Riemann sum of my sequence of functions on this partition and the Riemann sum of my limit function. So if I was to just do some algebra and combine those sums together, that would look like, well, the sum of, so this would be the difference in their heights, and this would be uh, times xi minus xi minus one, that's like the length of the subinterval. And we're gonna add each of these up. So uh, what can we say? Well, these absolute values by the triangle inequality applied a bunch of times say, I know that those, can move inside of here, and I'll change this to a less than. So by the triangle inequality, absolute value of the sum should be less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values here. And I don't need absolute value around these because I know that xi is to the right of xi minus one. That's how a partition works. And uh, what else can I say now? Well, wait a minute. <clears throat> I know that I'm very far out in the sequence. I'm very far out. I'm past this index k, and that index k guaranteed me that, oh, the function fm evaluated at any point in the interval minus my function f evaluated at any point is less than epsilon. So that this part right here should be less than epsilon. So that is where the uniform convergence comes in to help me. And uh, of course, epsilon is this constant that can come out front. And if I was to add up each of these, that's just adding up the length of each subinterval. That should just add up to the length of the whole interval, which of course is b minus a. So, so far, what have I got? I have got that the difference between these two Riemann sums over any tag partition, p dot, should be a dot there probably, is uh, less than epsilon times v minus a. So now let's let r be any index that's larger than k as well, such that the integral of uh, fr is within epsilon of a. And remember, I can make this statement here because I know that this sequence is Cauchy, and it converges, and I've said here that the limit of those things is a. So that means that, well, eventually, there's some index such that once I get past it, this integral should be within epsilon of a. So I'm applying this now down here. So then uh, also in that case, with that definition, I, there's a little bit more that went with that. Um, let's let delta be any positive number such that uh, whenever the norm of this partition p dot is less than delta, then I'm guaranteed that the integral of fr is within epsilon of the Riemann sum on fr. So again, that is using the definition of the fact that fr is a Riemann integrable function. So that's how I know that such a delta exists that'll guarantee this, as long as I take any partition whose norm is less than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these pieces together. So what do I wanna do? Now we're here. I want to show you that this is less than epsilon or maybe less than epsilon times some constant. So the way that we're gonna do that is kind of the typical add and subtract trick, apply the triangle inequality, because we've got a lot of good pieces about, I can say this stuff is less than epsilon times B minus A. I can say that eventually the integral of fr is with an epsilon of a, as long as r is large enough. And I can also say the integral of fr uh, is with an epsilon of the Riemann sum of fr. So I'm gonna apply all, all of these pieces here um, now. So the first thing we'll do is I'll add and subtract the Riemann sum of fr, where again, I'm assuming that r is large enough to guarantee that basically all this good stuff here, that this stuff's less than epsilon, that this stuff's less than, I'm sorry, epsilon times v minus a, that this stuff here is less than epsilon, and that this stuff here is less than epsilon. So R is, is guaranteeing me all of that. And so um, 
Now what we'll do is we'll split this up once with the triangle inequality. And it's this absolute value of this plus absolute value of this. Okay, and so this should look pretty familiar. As long as I'm past k, I know that the difference in the Riemann sums of my sequence of functions and the function itself is less than uh, epsilon times v minus a. So I'm gonna write that down. And what else I'm gonna do is, now I'm gonna do my add and subtract trick inside of this one, and I'm gonna introduce the integral from a to b of fr. And so again, I have just changed this to be less than epsilon times v minus a. And now I've just done my add and subtract trick here. And now what we'll do is apply the triangle inequality one more time to this. And uh, why is that good? Well, because I know the relationship between this and I know the relationship between these. I know what I could say that those are less than. I know that uh, this one is less than epsilon. And uh, let's see, where is that one at? Oh, that's right here, cool. And that's from the fact that fr is a Riemann integrable function so that eventually the Riemann sums ought to be pretty darn close to what the value of the integral is. And uh, finally, this over here, if A is the limit of the sequence, then I know that, well, the points in the sequence eventually better get really close to A. So I could say that each of these, again, less than epsilon here, and this piece is less than this epsilon. So if I was to say, um, add these up, or maybe you think about factoring an epsilon out, you'd have epsilon times B minus A, and you have plus two of these. Why is that cool? So we just showed for any epsilon, we found a delta such that as long as the norm of the partition is smaller than that delta, then I get that the difference between the Riemann sum of the function f on any partition, again with small enough norm, and this number a is less than epsilon times b minus a plus 2. And maybe you're like, oh, b minus a plus 2, a and b are constants. So this is just epsilon times some constant. So the fact that epsilon is arbitrary is really cool because that says that, well, this difference is actually arbitrarily small. So again, we could have made this pretty. We could have picked this delta to be so small uh, to maybe make this just wind up with epsilon at the end. You could think about how you could do that. But the point though, since epsilon was arbitrary, again, this difference then is actually arbitrarily small. Therefore, the function f is in the set of Riemann integrable functions. And moreover, what is the actual value of the integral? Well, it's gotta be this number a that the Riemann sums are getting arbitrarily close to. So that shows again, that uh, the limit of the integrals is gonna be the integral of the limit of the functions.